Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to get singles for all your Force of Will and other trading card games, as well as these amazing patrons. Thank you for your support. Enjoy the video. So we are going to be starting off with Josh Patton on Alter Loki. While we have Joey on Shimmy Ball. You know, some pretty standard decks that we're working on. It looks like Josh is going second for the first game today. Now the Chimimi Ball list that we were playing last gauntlet got changed up a bit for this one, so I'm interested to see what Joey's throwing. Well, how this matchup is going to work out, because I haven't been paying as much attention. But Josh's Alter Loki list is looking very strong, because you can go turn to Return of God even if you don't have an Alter online. Or really not, because you need to get a blue source first. But being able to search for your black stones with Lila and then have a higher chance to hit your blue stones is pretty good. And it looks like Joey's mulligan to three, four, and Josh is only mulligan to two. Standard Speaking Stone start into Narwin. We have a blue stone first from Josh. That's a little awkward. Because we do want that black stone first to be able to play a Layla or any of our black resonators. Swung the Arwen in for two. And we're getting a McKay draw. Okay, we've got a very standard, pretty good start for Chimimi Ball. Oh, a double blue stone for Josh. It hurts a lot, actually, because we don't have any black sources to play 70% of the blue of a black deck. This had to be the first game of the day. Flipping the worst stones. You do hear Cannonball in the background, sir. I've got a little bit of Mega Man OST going on today. And we're going to Keyes' call that second McKay effect. Because I don't know what else Josh would want to do with that will that he's got open sitting there. Does Joey leave up the one? Now we're, are we swinging in with a 7 damage McKay? Oh yeah. Gotta get the damage in where you can, because then the Chimimi Ball combo just goes off real hard. Oh, he's inheritancing Blackleaf from hand to kill the McKay when he targets it with Arwen. Ooh, that was... That was a really good play from Josh to avoid taking 7 damage against a combo deck. I'm 
And we finally hit the Black Source. Are we finally seeing a Layla? Are we seeing a Mana Transmuter? I'm assuming. There's the Mana Transmuter. Be able to pay three and play a Layla. No, we're paying three. No, we're paying four. So we're paying a total of seven to play this freed from the altar. Josh's hand must not be good at all. This is uh, very worrying. Especially going into turn four on Tremimi's side. We're still looking for a Resonator. And he does search for the Lila. He has seven cards in hand, though. Let's see what... I don't think we're doing much else on Josh's turn. Yep, we're passing it to Joey. What are we gonna do on turn four? We're swinging with a McKay first before playing a third Resonator. That's... Okay, and then he plays the Fairy. I think... I think Joey miss, uh, miss sequence there a little bit, but it still worked. Josh is paying three to play a Whispers. That's a new addition. So we basically paid five to draw a card. We can draw for turn and see what goes on. So you've got two black sources, two blue sources, and a mana transmitter and energize. And Joey's sitting there with three will up. The ruined story or a even a wins the salvation. He does not want Return of the God to go off. seeing it right here with nine cards in hand can we not play anything and we have to play a return of the god no we're playing an altar play an altar lila Josh still has two will open if he wants to pay for Mana Transmuter this turn. He's gonna immediately sack the Layla. For another Darkness Stone. So he has three will open again. So he could just straight up pay for another Mana Transmuter. He could straight up pay for another mana transmitter and be able to mystery box next turn. I 
kind of thinking that Joey's holding up for a viola or a ruin story or something to make to punish Josh if he makes a, just one wrong decision. We have tapped two. And we are playing the Return of God. Standard, looking at a top seven. Yeah, the three will that have been left open definitely have some sort of interaction here. But if it's a ruined story, Josh is doing very well playing around it. But what are we seeing for a five drop? Are you looking for a Mosasaurus? Or are we looking for anything, really? What are we looking for, Josh? This is definitely... I'm thinking that Joey's left open for a Lorite and a Ruin story. And he's only, Josh only hit an Estema, but the Estema is still online, so he is going to drain the five. Hmm? Oh, he's not grabbing the Estema, he's grabbing the Ayu. He is grabbing the Ayu, and yep, there's the Lorite. Left open for a Lorite, and if he wants to keys it, he's going to get ruined storied. So I'm guessing the Ayu was going to try to steal that Arwen so that he can't use the buffs. We have just passed the Joey's turn. We have buffed the Lorite with an Elven Stone. We are Winds of vitality the Flying Fairy. Are we also tapping the Arwen to buff the Flying Fairy? We are paying three with the mana transmitter. Power of Immortality. We are Power of immortality the Ayu to sack it to Alter. And we are taking the fairy that got a Wings of Vitality on it. Oh boy. Buffing the McKay with the Arwen. That's a very good play. I would, I would have wanted to see where he wanted to put uh, the uh, buff for Arwen. I would have waited probably until the beginning of Untap. For that priority sequence. To see if he... Since he didn't put the Arwen buff anywhere. Let's go ahead and take something. Now maybe Joey was waiting to use the Arwen. These, this smash is going to get explosive very soon. So we can see a mystery box next turn. And if Joey doesn't leave up some type of will to be able to deal with it... Uh, never mind, it. Josh can just discard his entire hand if he really needs to. Just make it uncounterable. 
We are getting a swing from the 7-7 McKay. He's swinging into the Ayu. So I would assume that you would want to block with the fairy that you stole. Unless Joey's sitting on a ball warrior. Uh, Josh is just going to sack the Ayu to alter? What? Is he going to sack the fairy? Yes, he should get back the fairy. Come on, guys. Okay, he did sack it to Alter. He did end up sacking it to Alter, but... Come on, guys. The end result is still the same. Except that Joey gets to keep his Arwen untapped. <laughs> okay, I'll tell him to tighten up once we uh, get, get done with the match. But we do have a Disciples coming down. That Disciples is going to hit real hard. Because he's definitely going to swing into that Mana Transmuter. And fo either force him to sack it to altar, or force him to use the altar. Yup. Seven Disciples with Lorite and Arwen on board. This is not looking too good. But we did- <laughs> we energized? What? Why didn't we- oh, never mind. We energized Blue Leaf the Arwen. Because if you blue-leafed the Lorite, he could still replay the Lorite immediately because of, because of the quick cast. So that's still a decent, that's still a good play by Josh not letting him take an extra five. But I don't think it was needed at that point unless it was declared like it's the disciples going face. And we are getting the altar lorited as well, so we did have a double lorite in hand, even. Ooh. That hurts a lot for Josh, and he's gonna swing into the mana transmuter. And we are not seeing a mystery box next turn. Do we actually have the divinity to play a mystery box? One, two, two, one. Yeah, we do. Ooh, this is not good at all because this Disciples can just eat away at Josh's board no matter what he puts down. Hopefully he drew another Return of the God. Yeah, it's seven for box. I said we would not be, see, be seeing a box. If he had the mana transmuter still, we would have seen a box. But he did draw the, the return of the god. Yeah, 
hopefully you can get something nice off of this return of the god. Hello, Mikachan. I don't know what... Ooh, ooh! I don't know if that's what Josh would have liked, but... It's something, alright. So we do have two elementals in Grave, which is a very weird tech. But it's neat. This is super neat. I love this tech. Since you are playing the mana transmitter, you could just convert something. And you just produce green. And then you have your base blacks. And he's basically just a heftier mana transmitter if you have elementals in grave. We did banish the blue leaf. And playing in Athena. So we are still hitting a lot of big rezos. Use TSW and use her uh, will produce to play the leaves. It's situational, but that's pretty neat. Okay, so we are tapping the Athena at the beginning of Joey's turn to neg his. To neg Joey's board by four. So this Disciples is only a 3-3. Three, three. And there cannot be another Lorite on the board right now. And this game all of a sudden just swung straight in Josh's favor. It's a very strong thing about Alter Decks, where if you don't stop them early, they can go off really hard. But... Ooh. They just eventually start playing stuff. I think Steph ran a deck like that, that you're talking about during uh, Collinsville, I think. Oh, we have flipped Chimimi. Because I don't think Joey has anything in his hand that he can do anything with. Joey has flipped Chimimi in past turn. Joey has not flipped a single rune, by the way. I am very concerned about what a... Joey, what's going on, dude? But this Disciples is now a base 11-11 with Chimimi on the board. Now Josh has a lot of room to do what, almost whatever he wants. He does not have three blue to be able to box right now. Oh, never mind. He does have that third blue because he has banished that black leaf. Is it going down? Are we seeing a box? We're seeing a box. Oh boy. Alrighty. 
We have no counterplay from Joey. Flip the top five. That's no Borozuki. That's a Lorite. That's an Athenia, and that's a Saturnius. That's uh, that's pretty good. That's a, uh, that's a that's a pretty good. Uh, woo. I think that's uh, that's game right there. I don't know what uh, I don't know what Joey can do to get out of this situation right now. Because if Josh wants to play it safe, he can just leave up both of his uh, Athenias and just neg Joey's board for 8 8. Honestly, I think, uh, as a player, from my point of view, uh, I believe that with Alter Boxes, or not Alter Box, but yeah, pretty much with Alter Box, uh, you're going to have to be able to have Addition 8 in your deck to just, in response to giving it a counter or something like that, you have to be able to kill the Alter. Oof. Yep, and we are just tapping to kill the J-Ruler. It is very easy for Brunhild. Uh, I'm assuming that he's leaving up the Athenia so that he can neg 8, neg 8 on Joey's turn. And just not let Joey have a field at all and then swing for a lethal on, his next, on Josh's next turn. Right, machines is still going to be very strong. If machines just d is still like unfettered by anything, machines is pretty good. But it does look like Joey has scooped his cards. We're going to game two. Doesn't look like Joey sighted anything. Dude, what I want with red is I just want more burn spells. I want Lightning Strike back. Thunder, Lightning Strike. Yes, well, Dragon Palm is good and all. You just can't beat Lightning Strike. And once again, we have this turn one Arwen play from Joey. And it looks like Josh has elected to do. Joey has elected to go first again. Uh, do we have the turn one Lila play? We are freed. Ooh. And we're 
we're searching for the mana transmitter, actually. Okay. I'm guessing we're going to end up either energizing out the mana transmitter next turn, or doing something with it very soon. Joey flipped uh, Explore the Unknown very late, like he just wanted to see the top five cards of his deck. But I'm still concerned about why he's not just using Explore right now to try to get a better hand. I believe his rune deck is something like... Hmm... Now I'm thinking it's Unsealed, it's Nature's... Unsealed, Nature's Beauty, Bullet Ball, Explore, and, uh... Whirlwind Technique, I think? But yeah, we are energizing out that mana transmitter. And we're just going to pass the turn. We're not going to end up paying? Oh, wait. We did Blackleaf. We paid to Blackleaf off that Arwen. And we got another Arwen hitting the board. We're gonna Elemental Blast. Ooh. That's a punishment. That is definitely a very strong punish. We play the Arwen first, and then just straight shoot off. We are paying the black to be able to play that mana transmitter, to be able to play the power of immortality. And are we going to have... Ooh! We have a Lorite for the power of immortality! Woo! Oh, man. This punish, this is a very strong punish from Joey. I'm going to guess that we're going to be seeing a return of the god from Joey, from Josh here. Or are we playing another mana transmitter? No, we have an Alsade on the board. We do not have... Oh, we have the Black Leaf to grab with Alsade. That's cute. And then we use the Black Leaf to sack off to hit the Arwen. That's still pretty okay. And I'm guessing he just buffs Lorite or something. But if Josh can keep, if Josh can keep these uh, elementals off the board. Oh, ooh, we got a disciples on the board. Are we taking nine damage face, or are we killing? I wouldn't. I don't think we'd want to kill the El Sade here. It's only a four eight. Are we going down to 19? Or 17? Nope. He is he is swinging into Alisade. And he is gaining 9 life. He does not want Josh to have a board at all to be able to sack it off to an altar. And panic find and maybe an Astema.
But how are we getting out of this, Josh? We have to deal we have to deal with this disciples. But all we got is a sacrificial altar. That's not what we want. I'd say return of God right now would be great. But we're just uh oh, we're getting a Lila to get a free stone. Into sack. Unless he's got another Lorite for the stone. We're not Loriting the extra stone, so we might just see a return of God right here. Be able to hit something for five. And to be honest, if that thing that he hits is this little thing called Mosasaurus, might be pretty good. He hits Mosasaurus in these top seven cards. We do have three targets. I would, don't think I'd want to see an Athena. Actually, Athena would still be really good as well because we can just kill the McKay and the Lorite. But the McKay would end up sacking to shoot the Athenia, and then he'd have to trade into the Athenia. And Josh, what are we finding? Did we not find anything good? Did we whiff? I refuse to believe that you have whiffed, Josh. We have seen the Athenia. Okay. So I'm assuming that he just... He just sacks the McKay. Which is very questionable. I don't know... Why you wouldn't sack the Lorite and have the McKay to shoot the Athenia and then swing the Disciples into the Athenia. Oh, because Disciples would be negged. Never mind. It would only be 9 damage going into Athenia if you had the McKay plus Disciples. Unless you picked plus 2 plus 2, actually. So he still would be able to trade into this Athenia. the board. Yep. Before draw, we are negging the board. doing from here? Joey's thinking. What has he has shown his face down pile for? Oh, we got Yep, and he had the last Lorite. Yep. So I still I still question that point line then, because for the Athenia hitting the field, he could have sacked this first Lorite and had the McKay on board to be able to shoot the Athenia, the, uh, Athenia and the Lorite to swing into it. But we're sacking the altar to grab a Lorite to Lorite your Lorite. Man! Man! Who does these? Who does this? <laughs> it's 
So we have a 5-5 five, five Disciples. Lorate has definitely been the center of a lot of debate in our community. Because if you remove Lorate, a lot of things get very strong, but if you keep Lorate, it keeps just a couple things in check that need to be kept in check. seen a ruin story to banish a resonator on Josh's field. He has to banish an entity and he is going to banish the ethereal magic stone. So he's choosing to sack a stone rather than his disciples because he has another disciples. Also, yes, it seems that I was correct with Joey's rune deck. Explore, Whirlwind, Unsealing, Nature's Beauty, Bullet Ball. We don't have... We have another Athena hitting board from hand. We're just getting real big and we're not stopping. So I can definitely see him flipping Explore and finding something big and just bullet balling it. But we do have Box next turn. Alter box is just very strong. The bow ball lethal is very close. Did Keys's call the Lorite effect, so we don't have any effects on Lorite right now. All we've got is this Athenia. Grabbing a viola with the explorer. I need to be very careful here. Because it even though he does box next turn, he will have four runes revealed. Which means that Athenia is going to be a neg 4, neg 4. I don't think Joey can afford to play too much stuff. Oh! Oh! We have a Seed of Rebirth. And we're grabbing these, are we? Ooh! But 
Ooh. It's too bad that we can't give Arwen swiftness to be able to tap and buff something. He can't grab both Lorite and Arwen. He needs to grab a 2-drop and a 1-drop. This is going very interesting. I have with me now Stephen Holshazer on the microphone. The Stephen. Dude. So what is this game three? This is game two, actually. Game two. Who won we the first had one? a we had a box go off very hard on turn on game one. Oh. Yeah, that can happen. Looking like what box for next turn? Yeah, and box next turn, and Joey's just trying to see what he can see. Bullet ball lethal was very close. Well, yeah, I forgot that's Joey running the bullet ball in here. Mm hmm. Yep, and there's the Athenian neg two, neg two to kill off the McKay and the Algernon before the Algernon gets counters. Mm, that's a good idea. So Joey either saves the Al... He can't actually save the Algernon with Arwen because Arwen just came into the field this turn. Mm. So if this, uh, if this mystery box goes well next turn... It's is just Joey, is, over. Is Joey, Joey's only out just probably... Bullet Ball. Yeah, Lorite with a... Disciples with a Lorite into Bullet Ball. Yes, but if we do see a box next turn, Athena's a Neg 4, Neg 4. Yeah, that's right. Mm. If we see another Athena, that's just over. That well, was what we just... saw last game where he hit... He had Athenia on board, and he boxed, and he hit another Athenia, and he just left them open and negate. And yeah. just negate, negated. Hmm. Yeah, definitely a tough spot. Maybe he'll have saved the Lorite for the Athenia trigger. And just... Not even for the trigger itself. Oh, we and we do see the third blue source. Box is coming down. We don't have any way to stop it. Well, no, I guess there's a possibility he just whips with the box. He can whiff with the box. He has 26 cards left in his deck. He hasn't actually seen that many things. He's already seen two yeah. Athenias, though, and he has six cards in his hand. Yeah, so it could be a very meh box. Yeah. We could also just see Oberazuki Mosasaurus and just be like, oh, well, here we go. Yeah. Good thing. The, the wonders of Mystery Box is just a bunch of highs and lows. Yep. Uh, that looks hit, horrible. Uh, uh, that, that's, that's bad. That's that bad. is very bad. We hit a Black Leaf and a Layla. Oh, boy! And we jinxed it. 
I don't think we jinx it. I, th I, I do think this deck doesn't run that many resonators. It doesn't run that many high resonators, actually. Yeah. So the mystery box is like really... There's a lot of one-ofs. We have now spent this whole turn. Yeah. For a Layla man. and a Black Leaf, but we do have a Neg 4, Neg 4. Technically Neg 8 if he wants to, but I assume he's going to swing into the Cycles here. I don't think so. No, we are just uh, gonna neg debuffing yeah. on Joey's turn. Maybe we'll just go ahead and kill the Disciples with the Black Leaf. Then. He can, actually. Yes, you're right. He can banish the Black Leaf to kill the Disciples right now. Since it is a 3-3 currently. Mm -hmm. uh, he only had Joey... two resonators on the field, so he couldn't buff the disciples. Maybe oh, like I said, I was about to say, does he have a whirlwind technique to save the disciples? But I guess that's a no. He does have whirlwind technique actually, but I just uh, guess uh, he didn't uh, use it. Oh, uh, Joey. Um, Joey's getting a little tilted, I guess. Really? You get tilted? Okay. I don't know, it's only the first game of the day. It's only the first match of the day. Yeah. And we're flipping Shimimi. Oh boy. I mean, flipping. this definitely sets, I mean, he's not in range of lethal from Josh. And it sets up to where Athena really can't kill anything with a one tap. I'm thinking that he is, wants is to be able to kill something to, that was a blocker and then be able to bullet ball. Is there another mystery box in here? I don't think so. We're just getting Obrazuki, yep. And Obrazuki, and then on Joey's turn, kill Chimimi. Yep. Ooh. He's two counters down from Obrazuki. Just being a 2k. Yep. And on Joey's turn, killing Shimimi. digging for. I don't think there's much left to dig for. Let's see, where's the Chimimi list? So... I mean... Oh, we are Kisa's calling the McKay. Ooh. Yeah, this is going horribly wrong. I don't... I don't see an out here. We are so... unsealing the altar. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, In this response, he's just gonna sack the Layla to get the stone. Yeah. And then probably go look for a Layla. He might. I mean, there's no reason to get a Layla. He's gonna get his last stone. I think this is the last black stone, because the last one should be a time stone, right? Yeah. He, he can't Maybe actually search for a black leaf. No, no, he only runs three time yep. stones. That actually, he has one more black stone left. Mm. So, I mean, that's 20k. Or Rizuki next turn. Uh, man needs rune story, like two rune stories, and some mana. Why did he? He did search out that other Layla. I don't understand. Why? There's no reason to do that. He could have sacked the uh. Could have gone for a black leaf. Well, I, I guess, yeah, he was. It was. The, the altar was just going to be destroyed anyway, I guess. Mm -hmm. The deck. For some reason. And we're going to call a stone. 
We're, neg we're debuffing the board before untap. We're going to be swinging face with uh, 3,000 damage. With how many stacks of drain? I mean, this is... Oh, he's shooting. Dead. He's still going to shoot dead. off the... Layla. So he is at 10 stones, and Oberzuki is now a 2k, 2k. Yep. I'm just going to gain... 4,000 life. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe Joey sided in Agonies. <laughs> I don't think Joey actually cited in any cards from what I was looking. But no. Joey's not that bad. Joey should know. Always cite Agony. Yeah. As a Kyrick player, Come on. he should always cite Agony. Play, play the Agony. Oh my god. No. Okay. Are we gaining well. any life, Josh? We're still leaving ourselves in bullet ball range? I mean, there's no reason. I mean, he doesn't need these two counters if you're tapping to swing. Okay, yeah. there we go. He's gaining 4,000 life. Yeah. Okay, that's Please. Game Just scoop. Game is over. Yeah. Yep, there it is. Yep. Oh, it's already been an hour, even. So, yeah, he needed to keep that disciple alive with the whirlwind technique. He had the mana to yep. do it. He did have the one extra will to do it. I don't know if he had... And he had the bullet ball still. Yeah. Joey. Hmm? What happened? Joey, where was... You had whirlwind technique. Mm -hmm. Why didn't it save the disciple? On what? The black he leaf. Yeah, he black leafed your disciple. Mm, he, he, was I not tapped out? Nope, he, you he, had he, one will open. Yeah, oh. you had one will. Yep, probably should. <laughs> Let's see, did I have lethal off of that? I think I would have. Bec uh, yeah, you, yeah, you I had lethal had with a bullet ball play. Yep. With a uh, viola in hand. Yep. Yep, missed lethal. For some reason, I thought I was tapped out. Either that or I forgot where one technique. Like, you revealed your runes to me, and I was like, uh... Just, just Joey doesn't see green. Joey? <laughs> I'm not used to playing green. <laughs> Joey! <laughs> But yeah, no, it's not anyway. good games though. But yeah, I had an opportunity to get game two though. But this is really key on trying to get game out before like they start locking you down with Athena because you just don't have any good answers to Athena, unfortunately. Yeah, I felt pretty much on the ropes most of the time that second game until like until like that box wasn't... though. <laughs> yeah, that... dude, that box was that that was amazing. You know what's in the box? Disappointment. <laughs> Old fashioned father's disappointed disappointment. And yet it doesn't even seem to matter apparently. No, it didn't matter at all. That's the black leaf was the important part. <laughs> yep. Dude, 